Hello and welcome to our daily vlog from Kimmel Bay Church. Thank you for taking this time to draw aside and think with me for a moment about a female character from the book of Acts. I was thinking, God is always at work and it reminded me of one of the songs we sing at Kimmel Bay Church, which says, even when we don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. And this, I think, sums up the history of the church from the day of Pentecost right to this very moment. Are you like me? I look back at the book of Acts and think it must have been much more exciting living in those days to meet the people who walked with Jesus, who'd met him when he rose from the dead, to see Paul so changed by encountering Jesus on the Damascus Road. Yes, it was a brilliant time, but it was dangerous too. And in other ways, it was just the same as ours. There were those who needed help, like widows and orphans, and some got sick and passed away. Today we're in Acts chapter 9, a chapter of miracles. It starts with Paul's conversion. Then Aeneas is healed from paralysis and Dorcas is returned to life. As we're focusing on Dorcas, let's begin reading in verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. <clears throat> About this time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken to an upstairs room. All the widows stood round him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made when she was still with them. Peter sent them out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for the believers, <clears throat> especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Do Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. People stayed in Jop Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. Here at Kimmel Bay Church, when we think about Dorcas, Excuse me. We think about a lady <coughs> who serves the Lord wholeheartedly, always with a smile on her face. I've known Dorcas for a long time, and I'm always impressed how she demonstrates cares for others in everything she does. I think of her as someone who uses her God-given talents with languages and Bible teaching for the good of others. And I think of her becoming tired and needing to rest. <coughs> Dorcas, from the town of Joppa, was also a lady who served the Lord wholeheartedly. And given the soundness her death caused, I'm sure she did it with a lovely smile on her face. Now let's check out what else the passage says about her. It says she was a disciple. This means she'd made a public declaration of her faith in Jesus and been baptised. This challenges all of us, doesn't it? Have we made a public confession of her faith? Are you thinking about baptism? If you are, you know you should contact a church leader or someone at Kimmel Bay Church. Secondly, Dorcas was always doing good and helping the poor. That was the mission statement of her life and how wonderful it was. I wonder what our mission statement is. What, what do we want to do with our lives? She died. The ladies, and they usually were la ladies in those days, who laid out her body for burial, washing her and preparing her, knew full well that she was dead. 
she was greatly missed and valued so highly that the church in Joppa sent for Peter, the top man of the early church. How very countercultural this was to place such an importance on a woman's life. You know, I've heard, sure like me, you've heard the church getting bad press because of the way it deals with women. But this is all due to human error. This little passage shows us something to copy. We should be proud of our women and men, and we should do the very best for them. <coughs> Fifthly, Dorcas obviously had some disposable income. She had a house with an upper room. Most houses in those days were just one story. And she was able to acquire material to make clothing for others. This challenges me. How do I use my money? How do I use my time? You know what they say, there are no pockets in shrouds. Well, Dorcas had certainly done a lot of good with her money and time. Dorcas had obvious talents to sew and dress make. The robes and other clothing that she made were things to be proud of, the sort of things you show to other people. Dorcas was not one to say, oh, that'll do, or they can have something I don't want anymore. Do we delight in giving others the very best we can? My mother was a talented dressmaker, just like Dorcas. <clears throat> and I'm always reminded about her when I read this passage because she used her gifts and abilities until her hands became too painful so that she could no longer sew. At first, when we needed it, she showed, sewed to help feed and warm her family. Later in life, she sewed for the joy of giving away, blessing others and raising funds for special causes. She always had something on the go, some ripped school uniform to mend for a friend's child or someone's trousers to lengthen or shorten. And I finally see that God had more for Dorcas to do. To be presented alive once more to give support to those widows, but also to be the reason that many people in Joppa believed in the Lord. All the time, you see, God was working. He never stopped. He never stopped working. And he was keeping on working because he wanted Peter in Joppa so that he would be ready for the next big phase of his ministry. If you want to know what Peter did next, you'll have to read Acts chapter 10. As we close, I want to go back to that song and use it as a prayer of praise and affirmation. Heavenly Father, even when we don't see it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. My God, you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the God, darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are, Lord Jesus. That is who you are. And you are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Thank you so much and I hope to see you very soon. Goodbye.